Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Fred with Bravo One X-Ray. I had a couple of friends of mine at the last time we were at the range ask me about the color fill on my rifles. So I thought I'd put together a quick video for you guys to, sh to show you how I uh, color fill my rifles. There are many ways to do this. Um, this is just the way that I do it, the way I prefer to do it. I know people are, I have used uh, crayon to nail polish to um, whatever. My method is with testers paint and I'll show you all the details of that in the video. I just want to thank you for, uh, for joining me again and I uh, hope you get to uh, learn something. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up uh, button if you like it. Comment below please. Um, hit the subscribe button and a uh, little bell for notifications on any new videos. But uh, anyway, let's uh, get the cameras all turned around. Uh, I'm going to use the GoPro and a head mount so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And uh, we'll just go from there. Alright, to do the colorful process, what you're going to need is some... Um, mineral spirits um, I got a couple of really nice uh, cloth rag or semi paper cloth rags wherever it is and whatever paint you want to use uh, today we're going to be using testers uh, GI red and uh, some flat white I think what color is this flat white um, I don't think yeah, that's thinner. Yeah, those are two we're going to be using today. And then um, you can use a couple di a variety of different things. Um, I've used these uh, uh, nail care picks. They work pretty good because they've got a little bit of a thicker point on them. And uh, they'll hold the paint a little bit better. Or you can just use your standard... Uh, toothpicks. So we'll give both a try here today. I'll just put a couple of toothpicks down. And uh, you'll have to use one stick per color. Looks like I already have one that's been used on the red, so we'll use that one for the red again. And then what we're going to do is we'll just put this stuff aside here. Um, it makes it a lot easier if you take the upper receiver off the lower receiver. So we'll go ahead and do that real fast. Alright, there we go. Alright, so then all we have left is the upper here. Here, let me uh, get readjusted here. Uh, things I go through for you guys. Anyway, um, like I stated, we had a couple of my buddies that were asking about how you do this. So we're going to go ahead and knock this out on this uh, DB9 of mine. I think it'll look kind of cool. Uh, their colors are pretty much, at least on like their box I showed you in the unboxing video, was black and white. So we're just going to paint all this here with this emblem here white and then we'll do the fire and safe on this side of the firearm and then we'll do the fire and safe on this side maybe we'll color in the uh, diamondback firearms there as well be kind of cool anyway so we're going to start here on this bigger part here and what you're going to want to do is take your mineral spirits take one of those clean rags and what you want to do is you want to get all of the uh, if there's any oil or anything like that on this uh, um, area you want to get it all out of there so we'll just go ahead and give this a good scrub make sure there's no oil or funky stuff inside of there with the mineral spirits I'll clean it off really nice all right we'll give that a second to dry And then, since we're going to use white, we'll have to give this a good shake. And I used this the other day, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. But you want to make sure it's shaking really well. Um, there's a ton of ways you can do this. You can do it with 
I've heard people using crayons. I've heard people using um, nail polish. Um, I've just used this testers model paint. Uh, it wears really well. It doesn't get uh, funkified by the, um, you can see I got some dirt off of there. Um, it doesn't get funkified by uh, cleaning solvents and stuff like that. At least I haven't had a problem. As long as you're not messy with them, you know. So it gives a good shake. There we go. And then we'll just uh, stir it up a little bit with one of these white ones, uh, smaller one, smaller uh, toothpicks. We'll just give it a good, make sure it's all nice and mixed up well. Once again, this is just uh, testers model paint in flat what? Ooh, had a little scare there. So the uh, must have had some dried paint underneath the uh, um, cap there. I was like, what sprayed all over there? Anyway, so we'll go ahead and get it. Make sure this is nice and mixed up. and clean off this debris that's on there now you want this to be as clean as possible really so hitting it a couple of times is not going to hurt at all and the nice thing about the mineral spirits is it won't damage the original finish of the firearm uh, either I've done this on a uh, Springfield XD I've done it on several of my ARs um, it always comes out pretty nice. It's a little bit messy in the beginning, but uh, for the most part, it comes out pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe the excess paint off this toothpick here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to basically take the toothpick and kind of just follow along all of the spots in here and just make sure we get paint down deep inside those inside that groove so I got a little dot of paint on there and I'm just gonna and don't worry if you if it goes on the outside it's not a problem we're gonna clean all that up but the the object is is try not to get so much paint on here that you have so much to clean off just takes a steady hand and we're trying just trying to fill that groove with paint Just like that. Just little dots on the end of the toothpick here. And you're just filling in the engraved part of the uh, lower receiver here. Doesn't take a lot of paint. You can almost see it filling the groove. There. So now that whole outside portion is completed. Now we'll try to get the, uh, the D and the B here. Bit of a tedious process here, but the what it'll look like afterwards is just going to be awesome. Remember, you just want to put a little dot on the end of the toothpick. If you can see that or not, but it's just a little bit of a dot. You're just trying to get enough paint to fill that groove. And 
And you can kind of even push it around if you feel like you've got a lot in there. You can kind of push it through the groove a little bit. And then it's also important to make sure you're only working with one color at a time. Um, if the first time I did this, I got in a rush and I was doing the, um, the fire and the safe over here. And I did the white and the red and I ended up with pink. So I had to do it all over again. So just work with one color at a time. You can't be in a hurry when you do this. And see it just kind of filling in the grooves with the paint here. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting one because this has got like a, a pretty cool uh, diamondback snake head on here that you got to kind of fill in all the fangs and all that with. Um, I know somebody's going to ask about doing multicolors in one area. Uh, I don't know, dude. I, I think that might be a a bit of a challenge. Um, I haven't really worked done that way or done anything that way. I've just kind of gone the single color route. Um, seems like it works pretty well. I just want to make sure we get all the paint and all these grooves here. You can kind of see it taking shape there a little bit. All I got left is this rattle tail thing here. These little tight curves and everything are a bit of a challenge. Just because you're going to make sure you got paint all inside of there. Looks like we're doing okay. Oh, there's a little line there too I missed. There we go. Looks like I pretty much got it all here. A little bit more right here in this corner. And you see we got a little if it's a little heavy in one spot, you can kind of push it down with the forklift or with the forklift with a toothpick. I don't even know where that came from, forklift. Um but you just want to make sure it's all in there nice and uh, all the um, the uh, um, cracks are all filled. So next we'll, since we got the um, white out, we'll go ahead and hit this safe right here. too much on there but that's okay we'll get it cleaned up what we'll do is we'll take some of this over here and we'll move it over to the E and we'll fill in that E with it all right so now 
just prevent any spillage. We will put the cap back on the paint here. So we're about knocking it over. And then what I'll do is I'll take my clean rag here. You want to get this just a, a minute or two to set a little bit. Um, you don't want it dry, dry, because then it becomes kind of difficult to get off. I just want to give it a couple minutes to set up a little bit. You can see it's already kind of, you know, might be good enough to go now. So let's see what happens here. So we're going to take some of this more this mineral spirits. So all we're going to do is we're just going to start cleaning up the area with the mineral spirits just very lightly. And it's going to make a bit of a mess. It's going to turn everything a little bit white. But what we're doing is we're just taking that excess right off the top and your little bit of a mess that you made. You just keep rotating this around so you get nice clean spots. And you're not just spreading more and more paint around. Yeah, it's starting to come out, come out now. Like I said, you just want to keep on rotating the rag so you're not just putting more and more paint down by wiping. Uh, can you see that? That looks pretty good. It's getting there. What do you guys think? It's pretty sweet. All right, let's work over here on the safe. We're just gonna find a clean spot on my rag here. a little bit tricky because the you have the um, the stop is right there and everything else so you kind of gotta you might have to do this you know once or twice but there we go I don't know what do you guys think looks pretty good Find another clean spot here somewhere. There's one. Just kind of go. Looks pretty dang good. What do you guys think? So uh, to let these dry a little bit, we'll go ahead and move over to this side and we'll do the fire on this side so those can dry. Um, you know what, since we already got the white chicken up, well, I'll do red for you guys. Let's see what that looks like. Make 
sure you give it a good shake. Again, we'll we'll mix it up really good. Make sure we get all that pigment off the bottom that's been settling there. I haven't done this for a while, so they're they're pretty settled. I shook them up as good as I could, you know, a day or two ago, so they're not too too bad. I knew I'd be doing this video for you guys, so I kind of dug out all the paint set and stuff and made sure I had all the stuff to do it here for you guys. Just a dot on the end. There you go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but all you want to do is fill in those lines. Less is definitely more here. There, you can kind of like on that one, you kind of just how it just kind of flowed right into the. Right into the uh, groove of the F there in the eye. Uh, the you know the minimal amount of paint you can put on here, the better, obviously, because you have less of a cleanup to do. But you also want to make sure you get it, uh, f you know, completely filling that groove so it fills up the entire letter or design or whatever the case may be. There, there's the fire. Then just give that a second to to dry, and you do the same thing. We'll just move over to this ragus. Pretty clean over here. Just gotta watch out for the red that we just put on there. But this is the one we cleaned the other side with. I had already cleaned up the firearm prior to starting this for you guys, so you guys didn't have to watch the entire process. But once again, you just want to make sure that you you wipe the area with mineral spirits, get it nice and clean with the mineral spirits. Make sure you give that a couple minutes to dry, and then you can go ahead and uh, head in there with the. Uh, um, the paint. So let's uh, give us a little bit of a wipe down here. There you go. There's the fire done. That was, uh, here, there you go. What do you guys think? Um, I'll tell you what, I will go ahead and continue and finish this all up, and then I will come back when I have it all complete, and I'll show you how I have it all done, the whole thing. What do you think? All right, that way I'm not boring you with two hours of video on how to do this. So let me, uh, I'll finish this up and I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. All right, be right back. All right guys, welcome back. I had some uh, camera difficulties and the battery died, didn't know it. So I apologize, got everything back together here. But uh, yeah, got it all clean, put, finished up. Came out great. Looks awesome. This is that uh, DB9 9mm uh, carbine that I showed you guys in the previous video. Came out pretty awesome. Vortex uh, strike fire uh, red dot on top there. Let's flip it over so you can see the other side. 
Got the uh, nine millimeter thing down there and the fire and safe on this side. But uh, came out pretty awesome. I'm digging it. So the biggest thing is, is to take your time. Uh, don't be in a hurry with this process. Uh, you'll be fine. And um, hoping this comes out. I've done this twice already now for you guys. But uh, anyway, the uh, take your time. Uh, don't be in a hurry. And you know when you're wiping this, you just want to you know you're very gently wiping, see, because you don't want to get the uh, mineral spirits down into these grooves again. You know you want to kind of you're just taking off the surface, and then whatever is kind of flat underneath the on that's above the uh, engraving, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, is you're basically just wiping it off there. So you, just, you don't want to like scrub on it because then you'll just take all the paint out of the grooves again. But uh, yeah, it came out pretty sweet. Looks really good. I'll uh, put some pictures in throughout the video. I know it's kind of letting you know at the end of the video, but I'll put some pictures of the other firearms uh, that I've done. I've done this uh, quite a few times for my rifles and pistols and then for a couple buddies as well. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty easy process. It's not that expensive. Uh, you got a snowy day coming up or something, you're trapped inside, need something to do. Uh, this thing, this doesn't car to cost anything. I think, uh, the paints are what, less than two bucks a piece and some mineral spirits and some paper towels is pretty much all you need and a toothpick. So it's not really a very expensive thing to do. And it, man, it makes sure makes that rifle pop. Yeah, let's see if I can get a a little bit further out so you can kind of see there. There we go. Yeah, sure is an improvement. I like it. Hope you guys too. <coughs> I hope you guys do too. Sorry about that. Uh, it's getting late and it's uh, almost two o'clock in the morning. I've done this a couple of times here and it's uh, getting a little frustrating, but anyway, it came out awesome. I'm digging it. I hope you guys like it. I uh, love to hear your comments. If you guys have a different way of doing it or a better way or um, using some other materials, let's let's hear about them in the comments. I'm really digging your comments, guys. They're awesome. Uh, I love uh, talking to you guys and answering your comments and questions. So don't be afraid to put some down there below. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button and... Uh, Give me a thumbs up if you think if you like the video take a thumbs up and um, hit the little bell for notifications for more videos got lots more coming guys there's always content to be done but uh, there she is this is Fred with Barrow one x-ray I hope you guys are having a great week 73